Welcome and hello. This is a support video in HECRAS. And in this video, I'm going to be transforming net CDF precipitation data to a DSS file and file paths within that DSS file. This particular video will cover the importer tool, which is found in HEC Vortex and also import used in HEC HMS, but uh, maybe new to you if you haven't already used it in HEC RAS before. The importer tool is also good, not just for uh, netc.nc files, but also for a lot of other file types as well. So let's go ahead and get started. What I have is a blank HEC RAS application. I'm gonna go ahead and start a project here. So file, new project, and then navigate to where I wanna save this project, okay? So project, I'll just call this support and nine, and click okay. All right, so I'm gonna use the US customary units, click okay. This particular support video was motivated by a user who wrote in with this particular question. So this right here is my project directory. Here's my .prj file. And then I'm gonna go up a level. So I was in project from client. This is the data that the, the user who wrote in with the question sent me. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and then just move it into my project directory. What I have from the client, I'll call them, is a terrain file and then a modified terrain file. And then uh, what I have in these two directories here, it's, I believe, the same data, but this first one is all I really need. It is .nc4 files. This is netcdf version 4 files, which works with HDF version 5 files. What it is is hourly precipitation gridded data sets for 24 hours. So this covers January 4 of the year 2000. All right, so we're going to return to this in just a little bit. Let me go ahead and get my project all set up. All right, to do that, we're going to uh, start with RAS Mapper. So go to GIS Tools, RAS Mapper, if you don't already have this lower window opened up. And we're going to start with op uh, setting a projection. So go Tools, Options, and then Projection is this first menu up here on the left. For the projection file, we want to upload the projection file. I don't have it yet, but what I was told is that it is for NAD 83 Massachusetts mainland. So um, I can go to this website, spatialreference.org. I have that opened up right here. So actually, let me go back to the beginning. All right, so I'm gonna click on EPSG, and then I'm just gonna search for Massachusetts. M-A-S-S-A -S -S -A should be enough. And this first one right here, I believe is what I want, NAD 83 Massachusetts mainland and that is EPSG2249, All right? So we can scroll down, it covers the greater Massachusetts area, click on the .prj file to download the projection to my computer. All right, so that's already downloaded. I'm gonna go ahead and move that into my project directory now. So I'll go to the project directory, drag it over, and then I'm gonna just rename it. I'm gonna prepend the word projection, then EPSG, all right? Now let's go ahead and load that projection into HECRAS. Click on this folder icon. Here it is right here. And then that looks good. Okay, click apply and okay. Next, what I wanna do is load in the terrains. Now these were also the terrains that was provided. So this is something that you would probably have already. I'm going to create a new RAS terrain. Click on the plus button here. And this is my project directory from the client. This is the terrain right here, I believe. It's a GeoTIFF, and I happen to be using U.S. customary units. I, th I think the uh, client is actually using metric units, but whatever you're using, make sure it's consistent, both U.S. customary units for the project and the terrain or metric. So I'm going to convert from meters to feet. It's going to be called terrain.hdf and create. Okay. And then looks like that's all loaded. I'll click on close. Here is the terrain. This right here is a reservoir and then a dam and then a downstream river. If you want to get your, your bearings of the actual area, that you can also add in a web imagery. So go up to project, add web imagery, and then something like Google Satellite, for instance. Click OK, and then wait for that to load in. OK, it looks like it's already loaded. I just need to toggle on the map layers here. Yep. All right, so here's the reservoir up here, and then here is the dam, and then Downstream is where the dam releases. All right, so I'm going to um, toggle off the imagery for now. What we're going to do next is go to HECRAS, and I'm going to go up to Edit Unsteady Flow Data. I'm going to identify where this precipitation data is going to be loaded into HECRAS, and then we'll get to the actual conversion process of modifying those .nc files into DSS file paths. All right, so once we're here, click on this Meteorological Data tab, 
and then for precipitation and evaporation, click on enable. And then for precipitation, the mode change none to gridded and we're ready to go. The source is going to be a DSS file and paths. And once we have our file and paths ready, we're going to navigate right here. So we're going to take a timeout at this moment, return back to this dialog box a little bit later after we do that conversion and we have the DSS file. All right. So next up is the importer. You can find the importer tool in heck Vortex or in heck HMS. I'm going to show you how to get the importer tool from both uh, sources. In the description of this video, I will leave a link to heck Vortex. Oops, not this one, but here is the GitHub page for heck Vortex. This page that I did have up talks about heck Vortex and all the different input file types. So not just NC4, NetCDF files, GRIB files, HDF files, ASCII files, build files, and also heck DSS files gets converted into heck DSS files with a number of different reprojection, resampling, uh, and uh, clipping options. So we're going to see that in action in just a bit. So go ahead and download the current version of Heck Vortex if you want. So just uh, go ahead and click on download zip. Now this currently at the time of this recording is version 0.11.21. But if you want to use a previous version, just click on releases right here and it'll show you the previous releases. I actually have 11.16 downloaded and that worked fine for me, but one of the more recent versions didn't for whatever reason. So if you wanna download the, uh, the source code, you can do that for 11.16. After you do that, let me go ahead and open up the importer tool. So see heck, and then Vortex, Vortex uh, 0.11.16. Again, you may have a more recent version and then click on bin and then click on the importer.exe tool right here. Now it opened up fine for me right here, but it may prompt you for uh, special privileges. You may have a button that says don't run and then another link that says more info. If you're using a Windows computer, click more info and then just give it permission to say, yes, I agree to run and open up this importer tool. I think Windows sometimes has a uh, some some security built in to prevent people from uh, running executable files if they're not exactly sure that that's what they want to do. All right. So this is how to open up the importer tool from Heck Vortex. I'm going to return to this because we need to actually do the importer, but I want to show you where it is in HMS as well. So open up Heck HMS. If you don't already have it downloaded, uh, download it first. I have version 4.12, but I know version 4.13 is out already at the time of this recording. And if you're watching this in the future, there's probably more recent versions out as well. Click on file and then import and then gridded data and then importer. And then boom, here is the exact same dialog box. This is just step one of multiple steps, but this dialog box should look just like the one we saw when we opened up the importer tool using Heck Vortex. If you're curious about the other Vortex tools, uh, they are added into HMS as well, but you need to go over to the tools menu and then data, and then here they are, calculator, clipper, grid to point, and so on. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just close HMS, but I wanted to show you where that is. Here is the gridded data importer wizard, and now we're gonna run through the different steps. Step one is what you're seeing on the screen here. This is where we add the the source files. So for us, this is the net CDF files. I'm going to click on this folder button over here to the right and then navigate to the net CDF files. So I'm in support number nine and then project and then from client. Okay, so this is the directory right here. And then here are all the .nc4 files. I'm going to click uh, control A to select them all and then click open. And now they're all listed right here. This is an absolute path that is from my own local computer. Once you have all the files loaded, click on the next button. All right, this is the second step. This is where we identify the variables. And it looks like we only have one variable right here, which I have to assume that this is the precipitation. So click on that variable, click on the, the greater than symbol, which is like an arrow right symbol. Now it's over here and then click next. All right, this is the third step. This is probably the most involved because there's a number of different operations that you can use on this step, most of which are optional, such as the clipping data source. You can use the clipping data source if, for instance, you want to identify a shape file to use as a mask. The precipitation data inside that mask will be exported to the DSS file. All right, but it's optional. We're not going to do that. 
the target well-known text. This is the projection. This we are going to do. So you can click on the little globe button if you're going to be using SSG or UTM. I'm not though, so I'm going to click cancel and then click on this folder button to navigate to our projection file. This is going to be the same projection file that we loaded into RAS Mapper prior to loading in our terrain. And it's this file right here, projection epsg2249.prj or whatever projection file you happen to be using. So I'll click OK. It loads in the well-known text, so that's correct. Uh, down below, there's a couple more options. Target cell size. So if, for instance, I wanted to resample the cell size of this projection, or I'm sorry, of the precipitation data, then I can do that here. I would just select feet or meters, and then I'd click on this button to select an actual value. These are preset sizes, but I think I can also just type in a size right here. I'm not going to do that, which means it's just going to inherit the existing cell size from the source data. And then resampling method, I'll just go with bilinear and click on next. All right, so this is the next step. This is where we want to specify where on our computer the DSS file should be created and saved. Remember, this importer tool is creating a, a new DSS file, so we need to tell it where to save. So I'm going to click on this folder icon, RAS support 9, and then project. All right, so I'm just going to save it right here in my project directory. I'll call it precip.dss and I'll click open. Okay. So here is the full path right here at the top. And now I want to specify the path name parts. Parts C, D, and E are all grayed out because those are uh, predefined. But as the user, I can specify part A, B, and F. I had a link here on the different types. Here it is, path name parts. I'll leave a link to this page in the description as well. Part A is typically the name of the project or river basin, sort of a global identifier. B is typically the location, which is a little bit more precise. C, D, and E are already uh, grayed out, and that's taken care of for us. And then part F here is additional user-defined description. So if you wanted to add some sort of uh, specific custom string to this particular import routine, part F is where you'd want to do that. Also, for part E, time interval, this is actually the end date for gridded data. This particular page in the DSS users manual is uh, for, I believe, time series data. So anyway, I'm just going to leave those blank. There's also options to override the units and the data type. Not going to do that. Just go ahead and click on next. And now it's OK. So it just took a second or two there to create the DSS file and convert those 24 hours of data to individual paths. I can click close to close it or restart. Restart is just going to bring us back to step one of the importer tool, but uh, we shouldn't need this again, assuming that the DSS file was written correctly. So let's go back to the project directory, and here it is, precip.dss. Before we load this into HECRAS, let's go ahead and take a look at that data using DSS view. So if you haven't already downloaded DSS view, go ahead and do that and then navigate to that precip.dss file. Boom, there it is. Here is our 24 different paths for January 4, 2000. Okay, it looks like it starts an hour early. Okay, if I need to modify the times, I can do that here in DSS view, but let's just go ahead and look at the data. All right, so here is the precipitation data. And if I hover over different fields, it's giving me values. So 1.156, 0 0.648. This is just the first hour. I can toggle ahead to different hours within the 24 hours. And I can also get grid data. The cell size is kind of wonky, but the grid extent shows here at 371 cells by 308 cells. So there's ways to, um, to clean this up and to modify it, but we'll just go ahead and stick with what we got. Head back over to HECRAS. So here's HECRAS. Here is RAS Mapper. I can minimize DSS view and also the project directory. We can bring back up the unsteady flow dialog box. Again, we're in the meteorologic data tab. And now we want to navigate to our DSS file. So I'll click this folder icon here. Then here is the project directory. Here is precip.dss. So that loaded in fine, and it's now displaying each of the 24 records of precipitation data. So we'll go ahead and just click on the first one, click OK. And now we see in our unsteady flow dialog box for precipitation, the file name, and then the path of the first precipitation gridded data set that we want to use for our simulation. So after that, I would just go ahead and save my unsteady flow data. I'll just call it base 
And then obviously I would need a lot more to the model to actually run this model, like a geometry file, plan file, boundary conditions, and so on. But once all that's set up, you can go ahead and run your HECRAS model with precipitation data that has been properly projected to match your terrain data with the same projection file. I hope that was helpful.